we've got side one and side two. I put these both up yesterday because I was playing around with the design and I thought I wanted to do something a little more simple. We've done, you know, the, the shaded sunsets before, but those are a little bit difficult for some people to accomplish. So I wanted to do something a little bit more fun and I guess whimsical-ish no more graphic style. So I put up both sides of the rocks and asked which side you guys wanted me to do. And it sounds like the consensus is a mixture of the two. So we're gonna do the bottom of this rock with the top of this rock. And I think it's gonna look pretty cool. And just based on how I'm doing these, you're gonna be able to do any of the three by the time we're all said and done. So this is a perfect idea of something that you can do for your rock for this week for the rock 52 and i say it backwards every time the 52 rocks challenge um because this week is sunset so we're just going to start by getting our horizon line going here by creating a half circle and we're going to go up and back okay, it's a nice thick white line here that we're working with. I'm occasionally gonna use my larger pens today, the 5Ms, just for some of it, it's more for time reasons than anything else. The link I left today is to the 3Ms because that's what we're gonna use most of the time today. So there we go. Oh, and I just saw a comment pop up. Let me refresh my computer screen really quick because that's the best way for me to be able to see. As you guys pop in, say hello. There we go. So up and back, just like that. And then we are going to, sorry, I'm scrolling down so I can see that I'm in frame here. There we go. And then we're gonna start zigzagging kind of back and forth to create the inside of our sun. Hello, Cindy. Hi, Lisa. Thanks for sharing, Lisa. You guys always feel free to share these videos into your rock painting groups. I find a lot of people, especially in the rock hiding and seeking groups, are always looking for fun ideas and ways that they can paint their rocks because you kind of get stuck until you see inspiration sometimes. So I really appreciate you sharing. I think, who was that? This is it. Oh, it already scrolled past but thank you for sharing. I really do appreciate it. It does help the page kind of grow too and we find more rock lovers. Hi Paula, hi Shelly. Okay, once we have our basic lines here for the inside of our sun, we're gonna just start adding our sun rays. So I just start at the middle and we just kind of a nice wavy line, nice thick wavy line here so that we have space for our dots. And we're just gonna work our way around and leave a little bit of space in between because we're going to add smaller lines in between each one. And I apologize, right now I have a little bit of the sniffles. I'm trying my best to fight the urge while I'm on camera because that's not something I'm sure you want to hear. But if I let one slide, I apologize right now. Our weather has been all over the place. It's hot one day, then it's cold the next day. It just can't make up its mind. Now, the one thing is I do find if I'm painting directly on to the rocks, the only color that sometimes does this is the white. I like to do two coats, so I'm going to let that completely dry, which doesn't take very long at all, while we add in our horizon with our black. And again, I'm going to use my bigger one just so you're not here watching me color black for you know, two minutes straight. So we're just gonna kind of, it doesn't even have to be a flat line. You know, how often do you actually see super flat surfaces around? The black cover is amazing. I didn't even shake this one before I started using it. Hi, Christine, no, you didn't miss it, you caught it live. And Patricia, you caught this one live too. I'm glad you guys are, are, are joining in. I really enjoy doing these these videos because I find, like I talked about the last time, I started doing rocks with my kids and I would find myself sitting there sometimes for hours when they were done and still just painting away, enjoying. I just did a huge batch of hiding rocks the other day and my son and I 
we hopped in and out of our car and spread them all over the area where we live. And it's just always so fun. I just, I can imagine people finding them and it just brings that little bit of happiness to what could maybe have not been a great day. It can be that one thing that turns around a day and I don't really mind if they don't post them afterwards. I, I leave them where I know that they are found. So there's the bottom there. So we'll let that dry. See now the top is already dry. You can tell because it's not glossy at all. So we're gonna go over our lines one more time with our white just because I want them to stand out really well. Hi Pam, I saw that one fly by really quick. There we go. And if you're just joining now, this is, we voted on the rock yesterday. I had two different designs of a sunset rock, although my daughter saw it and she said it was a sunrise, you know, whichever way you want it to be. I've got kind of a groove on this rock. Just do the best. They're rocks. They're not going to be flat. And we're just doing a second coat on our white just to give it nice brightness to it. And when you're doing a second coat, especially if you don't let it dry a long time, I mean, you guys saw how short of a period that was, don't press super hard because you might pull up a little bit of paint if you're pressing really hard and dragging your, your pen along. Especially if it's if it's drying for an extensive period of time, you'll be fine though. All right, so we're gonna let that white go for a second. I can tell my black is just a little damp still, so we're not gonna move on to that yet. Let's see here, for those of you catching in line why this dries, I'll show what we're working on. We voted on the rock yesterday. I did two different designs. I've got this one here and then this one here, and we're actually gonna combine this top with this bottom. And just poking back, I realized I didn't do those little lines. So we'll do that while that dries. So I'm just gonna go and use just one size smaller white pen and add these in. I'm just gonna do a, a smaller size. Oh, wait, this is my extra fine. I don't want that one. I want my fine tip. And you'll learn these. I mean, if you do the pens, you'll learn them. The difference is just some people classify them as fine tip, extra fine tip, medium tip, but they really on the sides, they, they say they're 1M, 3M, 5M, things like that. I kind of go back and forth. I try to use the numbers because that's universal. That's how they're actually labeled on the, on the markers. But you could definitely do this with a brush and a steady hand. I haven't been painting for that long. I've never been a big painter. I'm more of a, a doodle type artist, I guess you could say. So working with these pens is a lot easier for me than to pick up a brush. But some people are just amazing with paintbrushes and they could, they could do this with these too, with just a brush. All right, now we've got our sun. All right, so we're gonna start on our bigger rays because those have had a second to dry. And I've just got orange and yellow. And the thing is, I've got orange and yellow to do that side, and then I also have blue and purple that we're gonna use on the bottom. And I've got my fine tips and my extra fine tips of each color. And I think that's why sunsets and sunrise scenes are so beautiful because you've got the cool colors right next to those warm colors. So they're really beautiful to see. So this is not a science. You do not have to copy this to the T by any means. This is just to spark an idea for you. So, you know, the way I color this in may not be the way that you want to color this in. Do whatever you like on your rocks, okay? So I'm just going to start by doing some orange dots closer to the center because, you know, when you're closer to the sun tends to be more heat, I guess you would think. So I'm just going to start by doing a few dots on the inside of each of these. And I'm sorry, it was right under my live spot. I apologize for that. I'll do the second set off to the side a little bit better here. See, this is why I have to refresh my computer screen. Every once in a while I can look up and make sure that I'm not way off to the side like I just was there. And I did something fun on my last one and I, and I know I wanna do it again. I skipped one spot dot and add, added another one. So when I come back with my yellow, I'm gonna do yellow, yellow, yellow and have one crossover. Not necessary, just something fun I did. And I thought it looked good, so I'm gonna do it again. 
So I'm just gonna work my way around, doing my orange dots. And that's where that funny bump is. Just do your best. Don't let the bumps irritate you. You are painting rocks. If they're super smooth, they probably cost you a lot of money. I don't pay much for my rocks. I try to find smoother ones when I go digging through. If you've never seen my video on that before, I go to a landscaping company. They're like those things that are on the highways that they have the big bins of, of mulch and things like that. They'll sell you five gallon buckets of rocks for next to nothing and you can pick out your rocks. So if you've struggled with finding where to buy your rocks, that's that's where I go. And we have a good time and you can kind of pick out different sizes and shapes and I take my little ones and they think it's fun to climb on the giant stacks of rocks. Oh, Ginger, I'm glad. Hello to your daughter. I obviously don't know her name, but if she's still watching, hi, Ginger's daughter. And Heather, thank you. I'm glad you like it. it it's a fun rock. You know, that's what, with this challenge, you don't have to have these perfect rocks. You know, you can do lots of fun ideas. And this was the first week where I thought, oh, this one could be a little bit intimidating to some people to do. A sunset can sound so intimidating. So now I'm just going back in with my yellow and I'm starting at the outside tip and doing one that crisscrosses where that orange one is. Here we go. Work our way all the way around here. in frame here. Well, hello, Sammy. I'm glad you're watching. You'll have to try the rock. If Sammy or you, Ginger, creates this rock, I love when you guys leave them in the comments. And if you do this rock in particular, make sure to go back to the pinned post and add it to week four, because it's the prompt this week so everybody else can see it too. All right, we're gonna leave it like that for now. Now we're gonna start going in with our extra fine tip ones to add some smaller dots on these smaller. And we're gonna do a few in between here. I'm gonna do the exact same thing, just a couple in the front and then skip one and leave space for the yellow in the back. And I am gonna go a little bit faster than I would just so that we can move along here. But take your time. When I'm doing my lives, I'm not going for absolute perfection. You can obviously slow down when you're doing yours at home. But if I wanted each and every dot perfect, you guys would be here all day. Which could be fun, but you know. And do a few little ones in between our big ones here. Like so. There we go. And we've got our sun completed on the top here. Ginger, my little girl loves to make rocks too. I've got, I keep her one of her rocks right here on my desk at all times. And she's four. We do a lot of rocks together. So we've got our top done. So that was our top and we're gonna do this bottom on the rock now. So if you if you did like this sun better, you know, you can tell you're just gonna use the same technique we do on the bottom here and just create your sun a little bit different on the top. So our black is nice and dry, so we don't have to worry about that. And like I showed you before, we're gonna use blue and purple, nice cool colors to go in the bottom half. And we'll start with our big and we'll we'll add in are uh, smaller once we get it filled in. Now with this area, since it's such a bigger space, you can start by doing a few larger dots too, by just drawing circles. 
because just the point of this, you know, it would take a long time to fill it all up. And like I said, you guys don't want to be here all day. Now, if this is something you can definitely work on a little while, put it down and come back if it gets tedious to do dots for you. I find it kind of relaxing, but everybody feels differently about doing the dots. So we're gonna start with our biggest ones, like so. Just a, I just do them randomly around. Hello, Patricia from Nebraska. Yes, Caroline, that's, you know what? That's why I wanted to do one like this. She said it's cute and easy. And that's the thing with these rocks and especially with the prompts. You don't have to do anything crazy. Somebody would be very happy to find this rock if you hide rocks. I know a lot of people here hide rocks. Some people gift them. I know if you join our rock painting tutorials group, that's one of the questions we ask and I'm always curious to see what everybody does with their rocks, but lots of people hide them. Lots of people gift them. Kindness rocks movement is a big thing and I don't see it going away anytime soon. It's just growing each and every year. All right, now that we've got most of our bigger areas, now I'm just gonna go in and do a few kind of medium, just a little swivel of the tip, just like so, and then I'm going to do the same thing with the blue, just a couple in there that are just a swivel of the tip. Sonia, you're going to love, love, love your glitter pens. I have done so many of those dangle rocks that I, um, that's what the profile picture is from. And I love the, the glitters on those. Here we go. All right, now that we've got that size, now we can come in with the same pen and just do a few dots with this one. So they're gonna be a little bit bigger than when we use our extra fine to fill in. So I just kind of, you can make patterns with these, but I just like to kind of go in randomly and spread them out and I just go back and forth between my two colors. Make sure you go all the way out to the edge, like so. And then we're gonna come in and I'm gonna cap that because that's the last one we use that one. Come in with my purple. And not quite on the tip, if you go straight on the tip it will almost be a little bit too small we're going to go in with a smaller size yet so you want to have a little bit of variation on the size so i just have it slightly off to the side here and i'll show you at that angle i'm just going to go in and basically fill any space you think you can fit that like so oh let's do one more right here and now we're going to move on to our extra fine, which is really going to fill in this space nicely. I'm going to take a little sip of water here because my throat's a little scratchy today. <clears throat> okay, so now we're just going to go in with our extra fine tip, and these are considered the 1Ms. If you're doing this with dotting tools and things like that, you could probably just use a sharpened pencil tip if you're using like standard acrylic paints and doing this. And we're just gonna go in and start filling in and I'll do a little blue, then go to a little purple, kind of back and forth a few times, just so I don't end up with too much blue next to each other or too much purple. I just kind of do them in little clusters together. And this is just another reason I just adore these pens because I'm trying not to give a shadow with my own hand, but I. I'm not that great with dotting tools yet. I have not purchased a set. I use my pencil erasers, but I mean, this is just so much, so easy to 
get in here and get all these tiny little dots in here. So we're just going to go in and just find the empty spaces and we're just going to fill them with our purple. And if you feel like an area seems like it has too much purple in it already, just leave it blank and come back and forth with your blue, then purple, back and forth, back and forth until you're happy with what your rock looks like. It's funny, I know I've discussed this before, but I tend to hold my breath when I'm dotting. Whenever I say something when I dot, I end up hitting something out of space. See, down here a little bit. Oh, in this corner we need some purple. really run into any spots where I thought I really needed more blue so I think after we finish up here we might be good to go all right sometimes you just kind of have to hold it back a little bit further away and you'll see it will stand out to you like a sore thumb like right there it stands out to me like a sore thumb that it needs a couple dots if you get up too close, sometimes you don't, you can't see it. Like this line up here almost looks thick. You want to get those dots all the way up there. There we go. Let's see. I think we're going to call that good. Got my lid off here. Oh, let me you know what. Sorry. I do this every time. I say I'm done, and then I go back in and add a couple more. But like I said, you can continue to work. I'm trying not to keep you on all day watching me do a whole bunch of dots. All right. So we're going to call that good to go. And I, you know what? I'm really happy. The first person that suggested it to the second person who suggested it to everybody that thumbs up the suggestion to mix and match our sunsets because we had this one up there to pick from or this one and I would have to say I think this is an amazing combination so I will let this dry completely oh you know what oh you guys I missed my I never went back in with my yellow on my race hi ah, let me get these done I didn't do the yellow on the tips of the little ones guys almost forgot um, and somebody just asked, do I seal the rocks? I seal rocks, especially because I, I usually hide most of my rocks. And so I always let them dry completely first. Then I do a couple very light, light coats, like mist my rocks. Just enough to kind of seal them. And then I usually give them one thicker coat before I hide them out in the elements. Just because I like them to last a little while longer. There we go. But I just use, um, I'm sorry, I, I use like a Krylon. I've used a few different kinds. I, I don't have one that I've loved more than another enough to be like, this is the one you need. I use a Krylon. I've used the Rust-Oleum, just the clear coat. Um, sealants make sure it says it's water resistant and non yellowing is the main thing that I look for and I don't like super duper glossy finishes on my rocks I think um, for some rocks I do but for most of them I I don't mind so 
if that's something you're looking for there are certain brands that work better for that so now i can say it is finished so thank you everybody for joining in and following along and for everybody that shared the video out into your groups i appreciate that a lot so come back and share your rocks when you're done and i can't wait to see them all uh patricia i you know what i enjoy passing them out we just went and did about 50 rocks the other day and when i see the little kids holding the rocks that they find it makes every moment worth it so otherwise my house would be full of rocks if i didn't hide them and give them out which sometimes it seems like it is anyways <laughs> so everybody have a fantastic day thanks for watching again make sure to like the page rock painting 101 so you get notified next time we go live